to the 2023 Tax Act Clearwater Invitational presented by Evo Shield. As the sun sets over Clearwater Beach, a few miles inland at the Eddie Seymour Softball Complex, it is time for the finale, the Sunday Night Showcase. Montana Fouts and Alabama, 12th in the country, taking on Michaela Edenfield and the number seven Florida State Seminoles. Both teams 3-1 on the weekend, and both teams with championship pedigree. 2012, Jackie Trina and the Tide were dancing in the rain, the first SEC title ever. And in 2018, the confetti was falling on the Florida State Seminoles on their 10th try, their first NCAA title. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Clearwater. I'm Beth Mowens, along with Amanda Scarborough and Michelle Smith. It is time for the Sunday Night Showcase, the featured event, Florida State, Alabama, and Smitty, it's two All-American pitchers ready to tangle. Uh, you, you know, you, this is the best matchup ever, right? And we're going to see great pitchers in the circle that have the ability to manipulate the ball. Kat Sandercock and Montana Fouts, the... The movement, the depth on their pitches, it's just going to be exciting to watch. The rise ball, the curve ball, both of these athletes bring so much to the table for their teams. Amanda, it's going to be a treat. And how about the numbers that these two have put up over the course of their careers? Five All-American honors between them. And the wins that they have racked up, 81 for Cat, 78 for Fouch. They have both taken their teams to the World Series and both with national championship aspirations this year for Florida State and Alabama. Won't be an easy road for either one today. There will be some tests ahead as we start out with Florida State. They have Kaylee Harding back. They were in the Sunday Night Showcase a year ago. She got a walk-off win for them. Yeah, she did against UCLA, and she'll be hitting the three spot tonight here against Alabama. She'll still be in the lineup, and this Florida State team is still rolling with offense. They have a little bit of power. They have some speed. They always play big whenever the lights are on in this Sunday night game. They're hitting over 300 so far this weekend. Just the one loss to UCLA, and they've hit seven home runs. Kaylee Harding has hit two, and so has Mack Leonard. And Kaylee Mudge, their leadoff hitter, has led the team with six RBIs. But Alabama has had their fair share of offense, too with the way that Ashley Pringy has been able to step up for them. They also are hitting over 300, and Ashley Pringy has hit three home runs in this tournament. The ball has been flying all weekend long. Seven RBI, she leads the team. She'll be hitting in the two spot. So much pop, she's showing up big in her senior year. The numbers for Prangy with those three home runs and the seven RBI here at the Clearwater Invitational. As Alabama gets set to take on Florida State and they will go with Montana Fouts in the circle. The graduate student right-hander out of Grayson, Kentucky. Fouts just with the experience in the circle. Look at the power numbers. 24 strikeouts in those 16 innings pitched. And it's really because of her ability to manipulate the ball, the depth and the movement of the pitches. So she's going to work on the corners with a curveball that really runs away from righties into lefties. Just late and sharp, really high RPM rate. And it's the rise ball at the top of the zone. If you look at the depth of these pitches, the way that that rise ball is going to climb over three inches, that curveball is going to slide through that slot at a good four to five inches. Really, you have to keep your eyes through the zone. So you're looking at speeds at 70 miles an hour with the explosive rise, the run on the curveball. But she's also been throwing more of a drop ball this year to help her out at the lower half of the zone. And you know, Amanda, that's going to be so important. The lineup for Florida State. Kaylee Mudge at the top and then Mac Leonard earlier today. The Knowles got a run rule win over Louisiana and Mac hit two home runs. Also added a sacrifice fly for five RBI in the victory for the Knowles. One of their three wins against ranked opponents, the lone loss to UCLA. And with Oklahoma losing to Baylor today, the Bruins may move into the top spot in the polls. 
as the Knowles will try for a fourth ranked Ladies win of the weekend. With Kaylee Mudge leading things off. Underway in Clearwater on our Sunday night showcase. And Fouts comes in with a strike. Much the senior out of Winter Springs, Florida. Coach Lonnie Alameda calls her the light and the joy of their lineup. And everything you'd want your tone setter to be at the top of the order. 344 on the season. Actually has added a home run to her repertoire. Hit one here. She's just steady Eddie up at the top, can do a little bit of everything, can lay down a bunt, can give you a good at bat, can draw a walk, steal a base. So good in the outfield too, holding down that left field position. Six hits, four runs scored, and six runs batted in in their four games here. She's gotten a hit in each outing. He does that, sprays a lot of pitches. Strikes out less than 10% of her at bat, so just a good lead off that prototypical. Can take the walk, hits for average. Two-two pitch from Fouts. Chop to short. Hevlin. One down. Nice for the Coming up, Matt, Matt Leonard, Leonard, who hit two bombs earlier today. So much power for Matt Leonard. The at-bats that she had against Louisiana were just on time. A home run in her first at-bat off of a changeup, and then she hit another one in her last at-bat for a three-run shot. A five-RBI game for Matt Leonard. Four good at-bats. Grad student out of Normal, Illinois, who started her career at Illinois State, now in her second season with the Seminoles. She was their leading hitter a year ago. And 385 here in Clearwater for Mac. Good screwball right there. I like that pitch. Take a look at the defense. Alabama, look at where Hevlin is, right? So they're over this way. The whole middle part of the field is just wide open. So big shift on against Leonard, who has power both ways. One two pitch. Jamber. Montana Fouts. Over the weekend, wins over Duke and UCF. She took the loss against UCLA. And she continues to move up the Alabama record books and wins and strikeouts for her career, highlighted by a perfect game two years ago at the Women's College World Series. Seventy-one miles an hour. That pitch, by Montana Fouts, bringing the heat. One of the hardest throwers in our game. That six-foot-one frame. She gets out to that eight-foot circle. Alabama had their doubleheader yesterday, so they have not yet played today. Seminoles just finished up with Louisiana about an hour and a half ago. Full count. Tom Meyer behind the plate, Cameron Ellison at first base, Steve Gould at third. The boys in blue today. Draws the walk. 
doesn't happen very often. Montana Fouts doesn't walk a lot of hitters. In fact, in this tournament, only two walks to her 24 strikeouts. Really good about finding the strike zone and hitting it often. Yeah, and that's just her fourth walk of the season to her 44 strikeouts. So. Here's Kaylee Harding. Kaylee has hit two home runs this weekend. Of course, both these pitchers have played in huge games. They've both been at the World Series. Oh, but early in the season, this is a little different environment tonight. You know, you've got the national TV audience. You've got a standing room only crowd around. And the tremendous respect that these two coaches and two programs have for one another. You know you may see these guys again down the road. A player that Lonnie Alameda calls a professional hitter. Has really made tremendous strides. She was all ACC last year and was the ACC tournament MVP. After the Knowles got back on top in the league, they've taken on some threats from the likes of Virginia Tech and Clemson and Duke. Right back up the middle, base hit Harden. Well, Beth, as you mentioned, Harding, a professional hitter in our coach's eyes, and you can't go back to the same corner too many times, and this is curveball, curveball, curveball on the outside corner. So Fout staying outside, adjustments by Harding, boom, base hit up the middle. Was right past her in the circle, too. I'd like to see, you know, I think a lot of times with Montana, her pitches are outstanding. I'd like her pitch selection to be a little different with her pitching coach Lance. New this year, yep. so they're, they're making adjustments still early in the season after Stephanie Van Brakel took the head coaching job at Memphis. So an early conversation after a well-struck ball from Harding as Katie Dack, the DP, will come up with a couple on base and an early threat for the Seminoles. Transfer portal, a big story in the offseason, and this was a big move. Katie Dack arriving from Texas A&M. All SEC performer a year ago. All right, three home runs this season, and she can hit the ball a mile. A lot of pop, a lot of power, of course, to plug in right there in the middle of the FSU lineup as a new player on their team. A lot of respect from the coaching staff to do that. Hit one off of Arkansas on a win over the Razorbacks here in Clearwater. Some smoke, 70 miles an hour. Dak's gonna take a pitch that's elevated and just <laughs> gets rid of it very quickly. We've seen a lot of that here, taking a high pitch and just hitting it from high to higher, driving it out of the yard. Familiar, of course, with SEC pitching. That yes. was off of the SEC Pitcher of the Year, Shanice Dells. And Fouts, the Pitcher of the Year two years ago. And a strikeout of Dak. Yeah, Two Fouts down. Ended up going down in the zone with her drop ball. And is going to get the call with this check swing. Could, one of those check swings I feel like that can go 50-50, but third base umpire is going to make that call from down the line and bring her up for the first strikeout from Montana Fouts. That's what 70 miles an hour reaction time gets you to bite. It's hard to hold back. There's Devin Flaherty, the senior lefty from Sarasota. Two-time All-ACC. Just one for 12, though, so far here in Clearwater. Yeah, this 5-6-7 in the order for Florida State, just three combined hits this weekend. 
usually quiet between Flaherty and Edenfield and Kerr. of you watching the basketball game. Softball here at the Tax Act. Clearwater Invitational, our Sunday night showcase. Number seven, Florida State. Number 12, Alabama on a packed house at Eddie Seymour Softball Complex. Both teams are three and one here at the tournament. Three ranked wins for Florida State, two for Alabama. And our All-America pitching matchup between Montana Fouts and Kat Sandercock. The early threat here for the Knowles with two on and two out. And the number five hitter, Devin Flaherty, a two strike count. Florida State's gotta feel good about how many pitches they've made Montana Fouts throw in this inning. Already 26 pitches. Flaherty fighting off some of these pitches. Full count. There is Montana Fouts, a grad student. Three and one on the season. Two wins here this weekend. Ball four. Bases loaded. Second walk. Well, and that was we talked earlier, coming into this game, just three walks on the season in her previous 24 innings. And two walks Next here in this inning. Base hit given up. You've got to be careful with Michaela Enfield coming up. A monstrous freshman season that she had last season with a ton of home run power. Sophomore out of Sneeds, Florida. Big opportunity early on for Florida State attacking. And they are attacking everything low. They are staying off the high stuff, and that's part of the reason why we're seeing them check swing at pitches low in the zone. They are really going down after that low pitch. Four for 12 on the year with a runner in scoring position. Oh, and two. Oh, and two pitch, Fouts in this position earlier in the tournament, got a little bit too close in the UCLA game, needs to make sure she expands the zone. Gave up a grand slam in that UCLA game. It's a good pitch right there, rolling away off the plate. Seeing Florida State just have such good plate discipline in this inning too, which is into you know, those two walks. They always have a good approach, a good plan like Michelle was talking about. Laying off that stuff high in the zone and looking more down. Here's the one, two. Got her. And the emotion from Montana Fouch. She kept it low in the zone for the strikeout. And Florida State leaves them loaded. Montana Fouts gets in a little bit of trouble, but then comes back with the drop ball. Low and sharp, the big strikeout with the bases loaded to get out of the jam. Tax Act Clearwater Invitational. Presented by Evo Shield. Always a Interesting to see what the sand sculpture will look like on a yearly basis. Out front, and now into the circle. Kat Sandercock, the senior from McLean, Virginia. One and one, all three of her appearances relief. So she's making her first start, which is her usual spot in the rotation. 
And Sandra Cock, more so now known for being down in the zone with her drop ball. She's still got that. But what makes the difference this year is the ability to throw that change up right there. And also a rise ball that she worked hard in the offseason. She hit the weight room, wanted to get stronger so that she would be her strongest, not at the beginning of the season, but toward the end. Going to throw hard in the upper 60s. And that change up and that rise ball complement that drop ball that has been her natural pitch that she's always thrown. Thirty wins a year ago. That was tied for second best in the country. And 80 win, 81 for her career, and she will start things off with a freshman, Kenley Kahalen, the second baseman, and in for a strike. Patrick Murphy at the helm for 25 years in Tuscaloosa. Winners of the 2012 National Championship. And back in the championship series in 2014 for the Tide. Look at the lineup for the Crimson Tide. Allie Shipman, how about hitting 500 with four doubles so far here in Clearwater? Crimson Tide at five and two. Kahalen has had a leadoff and reached base in five of their first seven games of the season. Out of Trussville, Alabama. They had a big freshman class a year ago. A couple entered the portal after one season, so an opportunity for this freshman class to step right in and have an impact. Well, and especially Kahalen, she graduated early to come over to Alabama and join forces with them this season instead of next season. Yeah, they initially told her to wait, uh, but then when the other players left, they said, okay, come if on you want to come on in, we'll take you. <laughs> we'll take you as our <laughs> new leadoff hitter. Just plug right in here. Patrick Murphy uh, approaching 1,200 career wins for the Hall of Famer. Two-two. Puts it in play on the ground. Christina Hartley, one down. And here comes the big bat of Ashley Prangy. The next batter is third baseman, Ashley Prangy. Senior from Indiana, started out her career at Ohio State with three home runs in their four games here. She's been so aggressive early in the count, looking to get that first strike that she sees. So no surprise that Sandra Cock is going to pull the string, throw that change up low in the zone. And she has been so aggressive when we've seen her EBs. Aggressive and consistent. That's the one thing that Coach Murphy has loved about her is the consistency of not just the power, but her batting average, her leadership. Prangy, again, it's Hartley. Going to that drop ball early in this game. Who has bigger shoes to fill than her uh, after four years of All-American Sydney Sherrill at third base and before that four years of Jesse Warren <laughs> at yes. third base in Tallahassee. So far, so good. Allie Shipman, another one of the veterans that uh, they will Call upon for a big leadership role this season. <laughs> Starting to provide power to all fields and not chasing as much to start this new year, according to Coach Murphy. Drop ball again, gets Allie Shipman to check swing and go and gets a call. Staying low in the zone early in this game. Both pitchers are. Yeah, textbook 
Cat Sandercock with that, <laughs> with mm -hmm. that drop ball that just falls off the table. High spin rate just disappears on him. 0-2 from Cat. Well, I think now that Cat does have other options, the rise ball, the change up, just working a little bit on a curve, it's hard to make adjustments. You can't just sit low. Mm -hmm. And squaring off with Shipman, who's all chalk, the back foot uh, at the back of the box, and the front foot literally on the chalk with that wide <laughs> open stance. Steps into it, right back to Sandercock. And a one, two, three inning for Florida State. One complete on our Sunday night showcase, scoreless. Beautiful night here in Clearwater for our Tax Act Clearwater Invitational presented by Evo Shield. Scoreless as we move to the top of the second. Beth Mullins, Amanda Scarborough, and Michelle Smith. And a, a great pitching duel. A couple of All-Americans who have both been at the World Series. Amanda, what are you intrigued about this matchup, Kat? And Montana. Yeah, I think it's to see how these hitters make adjustments and how quickly they do. But one thing I'm noticing early in this game, Michelle, is how Montana's using that drop ball. Sander Cox using that drop ball. They're staying low early in this game. Well, because they were paying attention. There were a lot of home runs hitting this tournament. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So they're like, they're going to be at the knees and below. And if the hitters are going to swing at those pitches, of course, they're going to keep throwing them down there. <laughs> yeah. There are the numbers. Five All-American honors between the two of them. Sandercock, the slight edge in career victories. First inning, Cat made quick work. Fouts had to work through 32 pitches. And Florida State loaded the bases, but she struck out Michaela Edenfield on a drop ball to end the threat. And now back to work for her with the bottom of the order. Kerr, Muffley, and Hurtley do up. The home run numbers have been high, even against some of the aces. Yeah. Megan Foremo. Florida State has hit seven in the tournament. Alabama's hit four. UCLA and Oklahoma State both showed up and showed out. They went 5-0 and oh here in Clearwater. And likely for UCLA, still undefeated to pass Oklahoma and move into number one in the polls this week. The Sooners lost at Baylor today. The two-time defending champs. Fouts, one down. This is the fourth time here for Florida State at the Invitational. And they, they have had an awful lot of fun. They were 5-0 and here last year. And their results this season, wins over Arizona and Arkansas, then the loss to UCLA, followed up earlier today with a run rule win over Louisiana. Lonnie loves coming here. She knows it. this is a Iron Forge is Iron type of tournament. Two down. Montana needed these yes. two quick outs after that 32 pitch. It was 32 we decided, right? 32 yes. pitch first inning. Well, the, the competition here is second to none. They, they are 15 and six in their four trips here. 15 wins, 11 of them against ranked opponents. So not only do you test yourself, but you can beef up your resume for the NCAA selection committee at the end of the year. It's got that postseason feel to it. Got cameras, fans. Especially when head-to-heads could yep. mean the difference between Maybe an eight seed and a nine seed that allows you to stay at home for the regionals and the super regionals. Home field advantage always being the goal, always being the key for both. Now, ironically, both these clubs last both year lost, <laughs> lost at home yeah. in regionals. Both stunned at home with early exits from the NCAA tournament. So they are coming back hungry for the new year. She's got to be feeling good after hitting her first career home run this afternoon, a three-run shot 
Well, I was just about to say the offenses have just exploded this weekend. I mean, no pitcher has had it easy, and we've had some of the best pitchers in the country here at this tournament and given up some bombs. Deep into the hole, Callie Hefflin makes the play in a 1-2-3 inning for Bama. Tax Act Clearwater Invitational, presented by Evo Shield, is brought to you by Tax Act. File for less and get more. St. Pete Clearwater, Florida. Let's shine. Plan your escape at visitstpeteclearwater.com. Evo Shield, the source for custom fitting protective gear, and Gatorade, and our commitment to fuel tomorrow. Oh, the crowds have been great again. Oh, build it. If you build it, Smitty will put her name on it. Build it. I love it. <laughs> Working hard. Beth Bowens, Amanda Scarborough, and Michelle Smith, who uh, lives here locally and has been instrumental in putting, putting together Christian this tie, tournament player, that uh, Bailey, just Dolly. continues to grow. Is this four years old now, right? Five years next year. Oh, by the way, we're going to unveil the field of 16 right. for next year coming up later in the broadcast. Yeah. Gets uh, bigger and better each year. Bailey Dowling grounds to short. One down. Look at Four, Sander. five, and six coming up. Sander Cock just rolling these ground balls and being efficient. Running that drop ball early. And the first baseman, Emma Brockwood. Of course, the reference is that uh, the hope down the road is to get a stadium built here. Correct. Whether or not it's Michelle Smith Stadium, we would vote for that, but it doesn't yes. have to be. <laughs> if there's a, if there's a uh, sugar daddy or sugar mama out there that wants to pitch in. That's right, City of Clearwater, Pinellas County. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, I think it's about time. We build a lot of stadiums for the men. Let's build one for the women. Yep. And for all the young girls that are out here watching, so that they have an opportunity to play in it. Well, the event's already so big. I mean, it's yeah. a packed house. Sold out tickets in 14 minutes. Yep. 14 minutes, not no. days, incredible. not yep. hours, 14 minutes. Here's Emma Broadfoot, the first baseman. Popped it up. <laughs> Kaylee Harding, two down. Tomorrow night, two of the top women's teams in the Pac-12 on the Hartwood will tussle. UCLA and Stanford. Coverage begins at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Don't look at your calendar now, but there's only a couple of weeks left in the regular season for the women. <laughs> a lot of young athletes out here enjoying the action, watching their heroes. Getting a lot of autographs. That's right. Pitch. This is Jenna Johnson facing Kat Sandercock. Kat only needed a handful of pitches to get through the first inning, one, two, three, and trying to beat a hasty retreat again here in the second. Back to back change ups. Fun to see Coach Alameda challenge Cat and the rest of her pitching staff this weekend, especially challenging Cat with not getting a start in the four games prior to this until tonight, using her as a relief, as a closer, putting her in a different situation, a different role, and challenging the rest of the pitchers. See what they got against this good competition. Johnson fouls that out of play. Lonnie Alameda is in. Her 15th season now, headed to the Hall of Fame in December. Seven ACC regular season titles, six tournament titles for the Seminoles. Four times to the World Series in the last seven years and twice to the finals. Winning it all in 2018. Flaherty on the grass. First six 
retired in order by Kent Sandercock and back to Montana Fouts. Ready to go to work for Bama. Scoreless through two, our Sunday night showcase, Montana Fouts back out there for Alabama. Well, Montana Fouts has elite spin as well as velocity. And take a look at the way she moves her pitches through the zone. This is a drop ball. It's going to tumble over the top. She's going to have a break of about six inches downward. This is a curveball. Look at the way it's spinning away. So that high RPM rate, and you can see them both drop over the top spin, curveball moving 18 100 RPMs on that curveball. So that revolution, the amount of spin that she gets on it is the reason it's going to break and run so much through that zone. And that's part of the reason she has all of those strikeouts, over 900 in her career. Back to the top of the order for Florida State. Kaylee Mudge, yeah, right back up the middle. Hevlin can't get the throw there in time. And the leadoff for Kaylee. Earlier today against Louisiana, the Seminoles stole nine bases. Can they put that speed to work again? Mudge is so good at putting balls in play, putting pressure on a defense, and using her speed to beat out this infield hit. She's such a spark at the top of the order for FSU. One of the foundational pieces for Lani Alameda has always been speed. An aggressive base running. See if they will test Shipman, Mac Leonard. Don't want to run out of a big inning with her at the plate. She's coming off a two home run game. We noticed the first time through the order, Michelle, how much she was staying away from both the righties and the lefties. When you throw 70 miles an hour, why not challenge a hitter, whether they're left-handed or right-handed, up and in on their hands? But one of the few inside pitches that she threw was to Mac Leonard in her first at bat, totally jammed her. She likes to live on that arm side of the plate to lefties. Leonard grounds a second, could be two, over to first. Double play, Alabama. Kahalen to Hevlin to Broadfoot. Two down. Kahala to Hedlin the, up the middle. Two new positions here, but the experience, a nice toss over and then guns it over to first. Long stride over at first by Arnott to get the double play and Montana is pumped. Seeing a lot of emotion from her in this game. And rolling those ground balls. It's become a part of Montana's game. Kaylee Harding, first pitch swinging. Hey, Willis! And quick work for the tide. Headed to the bottom of the third, scoreless in Clearwater. Our Sunday night showcase features Florida State and Alabama here in Clearwater. The seventh ranked Seminoles, three and one, all against ranked opponents. Mac Leonard having a big tournament, and for the Crimson Tide of Alabama, they too are three and one here in Clearwater. That includes a walk-off win over UCF right there, Kristen White. And a, a run rule win over Indiana, and the numbers are pretty close. Hey, there's everybody out on the concourse, the food court, having a cold beverage or two. Glad you could be with us tonight. Yeah. 40 games in four days here at the Eddie Seymour Complex. Seen a little bit of everything. We had 10 of the top 25 That's right. in town with us. UCLA and Oklahoma State both going 5-0 here. If you're a softball fan, this is the place to be in February. Yeah, absolutely. I mean sun, you get to go to the beach in between games. Well, not really, there's 40 games, so just stay at the ballpark. <laughs> <laughs> get to the beach early, get your walk in. Callie Hevlin, it's seven, eight, and nine. They have yet to do any damage to Kat Sandercock, who has uh, thrown just 18 pitches so far and retired the first six, four of them on ground outs. Sure the talk to the Alabama hitters is let's make her throw a few more pitches, start mm -hmm. to 
take a few more pitches, make her earn these strikes. Don't chase out of the strike zone and help her out. Well, and that's one of the things that makes Sandra Cox so great is the majority of her misses are down, are out of the strike zone, not in the strike zone. It was a testament to the growth of the game watching these two programs. 40 years of the Women's College World Series for so long dominated by the West Coast. And then the SEC started pouring tons of money into it. Alabama, the very first SEC championship. Smitty, when you were growing up, it was slow pitch, right, in a lot yeah. of the southeastern U.S. And what a moment. We had a 92-year-old woman, a local huge softball fan, throwing out the first pitch today. There she is. I, th I think it was a strike. It was. <laughs> awesome. And she was a lefty. Yes. That's right. So. Callie Heflin with ground out. Hartley's been busy at third, one down. Got some basketball coverage for you on Thursday night. Number one, South Carolina and Tennessee. Our coverage will begin at 7 Eastern. And it is, believe it or not, a tenuous hold on number one. As South Carolina and Ole Miss are tied late in the fourth quarter. So we've already seen in softball, number one Oklahoma lose today to Baylor. Will we see something similar and hoops. And Oklahoma losing to Baylor, and it's not even a conference game. Yeah. In them outside a conference in Waco. Larissa Pruitt, the right fielder. Another one of the freshmen in the lineup tonight for the Tide. Of course, the other two national championships belong to the Florida Gators. They went back to back. Mm -hmm. But it's been a six-year drought since the last SEC title, and I believe only one appearance in the championship series. So, Yeah, and Florida was the only SEC team last year, I yeah. think, to make it to yeah, the College only World one. Series. Of course, the Gators off to a strong start. Tennessee looks pretty good. Yeah. I always enjoy watching Sandra Cox. She's very deliberate about her pre-pitch routine. Two and two, as you hear the uh, Florida State faithful, that's their two strike chant, K-time in Tallahassee. Got this speed at the bottom of the lineup for Alabama with Pruitt and then White on deck. And FSU's defense, especially in the infield, is so good. Flaherty, Muffley, and Leonard especially have been there, veteran players. Alabama Player of the Year and a top five recruit. Had a couple of hits in the UCLA game this weekend. Out of Hartzell, Alabama. Got three freshmen in the starting lineup tonight with White and Cahalan, and they're all in a row here. Eight, nine, and then the leadoff for Bama as the count goes full. White, in the last few days, guys, may be emerging uh, as the new starting center fielder, one of the spots that's been open for competition early in the season. A lot of options in the outfield for Bama. Mm -hmm.
Alabama doing such a better job of working to count this inning already. And finally a lengthy at bat. Two pitch. Took that one off the foot. It hurts. You see that a lot with a drop ball pitcher too. That the hitter will hit that ball right into their shin or to their foot, their ankle. That's actually elevated a little bit. So important to try and reach through that low drop ball. Change of the direction of the spin. Just two walks all season for Sandercock. A bat that you'd love to see if you're an Alabama fan with how quickly that Sandercock has been rolling these ground ball outs and getting these Alabama hitters out. Especially out of a freshman up there fighting, battling, 10th pitch of the at bat coming. Another 3 2 pitch. Pruitt puts this one in play down to Leonard at first, steps on the bag, two down. And that just shows the experience of Kat Sandercock. 3-2 pitch after 3-2 pitch. She doesn't let the environment bother her. She continues to throw those pitches that are strikes, induces the ground ball, doesn't give up the hit, doesn't give up the walk. It's so easy to do that when you have to perform and throw strike after strike after strike. She has such good command, you guys. You know, that's why she only has two walks in the season, because she can put the ball in the quadrant in the spot that she wants to put it. Up, down, in, out. And that's a good point, because it's command and control. She can command her pitch, and she can also control it to put it in the location that she wants. Here's Kristen White in the nine spot. You may have seen her handiwork already on SportsCenter with a, uh, a walk-off hit and a uh, home run saving catch to her credit this weekend. This was in the eighth inning, tie game against UCF. Chopped right back up the middle to win it for the tie. That Look, was yesterday. Love the excitement, right? Backhanded grab, Muffley fire to first and the first nine in a row retired by Kat Sandercock. Welcome back to the 2023 Tax Act Clearwater Invitational presented by Evo Shield scoreless Florida State and Alabama and we're joined now by head coach Lonnie Alameda. And coach what are you seeing from Kat Sandercock? She's rolled uh, seven ground balls so far. Yeah, I mean, got good bite on her drop ball. Um, this tournament's been trying. I see a lot of pitchers, you know, are we coming in? Are we starting? Are we relieving? So um, <laughs> I think it's kind of fun for her to like, have her own warm up and, you know, controlling the game. And uh, she's having a good time. I mean, it's a great ball club and what a great atmosphere. Coach Montana Fouts looking like she's staying more low in the zone. What are you seeing out of her tonight? Yeah, I mean, the same thing with Fouts, too. I think, you know, early on, she's a great pitcher. And, um, you know, it looks like she's mixing speeds a little bit. Probably a new pitching coach. They're trying to figure each other out a little bit, too, you know. So she's a competitor. And, you know, I can see her feeling out the zone. But, you know, she spots it really well. And she's starting to mix speeds, which is it's cool to see her continue to develop, too. Well, thank you very much, Lonnie. We appreciate it. All right, thank you. Well, we got a good one tonight. It's a ground out a thon right now. <laughs> 13 <laughs> combined ground outs for the two drop ballers. And for Florida State tonight, one for four with runners on base. They have had opportunities in both the first and the third. In fact, that first inning, bases loaded. And then Montana Fouts struck out Michaela Edenfield. 
four, five, and six. Hevlin. Round out. <laughs> Another one. Michelle, you were talking about her curveball and her drop ball earlier, comparing the two. And oftentimes, I think you, when you think of Montana Fouts, you think of her rise ball and her curve. But that drop ball tonight has been so effective. A couple of strikeouts with their drop ball and another out right there. She's been putting it in perfect position right at the top of the knee. So by the time it gets through the zone, it's, it's dropping down. And Flaherty flares one foul. And, you know, so the adjustments as a hitter that you have to make are trying to get down into that ball, re reverse the spin and, and line it or barrel it up out onto the green. And it's hard because a lot of times with fouts, you go up there thinking, all right, keep my hands high because I got to watch the rise ball. I don't want to strike on the rise ball. And all of a sudden, the, <laughs> the pitch is at your knees. <laughs> and she does have great spread on her pitches. So she's, she gets a good four to six inches on her drop. A rise ball like that last pitch is going to climb about three to four inches. Well, and that was the big thing for Montana coming in this year, right? She started out last season 13-0, and 0, and then second half of the year, she was barely above 500. People were timing her velocity, and so she added to add, had to add some new elements like that. That changeup right there. Throwing it for a strike, too. Way to manifest it, make it happen right there, Beth, within uh -huh, this count uh -huh. to move it to a 1-2, this off-speed pitch. We're starting to see that pitch throughout the weekend develop more and more, and she's continuing to work it and throw it. Well, I think important for Montana, too, is that she doesn't even always have to throw it for a strike. She just needs to show it. Well, and I think one thing that a lot of fans might notice if you're just watching Montana for the first time is the change in her pre-motion or in her windup. She's staying in her glove. It looks a lot different than the Montana bouts that we've seen in the years past when she was an All-American, completely changed her pre-motion and the ball is staying in her glove longer instead of swinging her arm back before she moves forward. These are both All-Americans that went to the World Series and neither one wants to stay put. Constantly looking for ways to improve. Lonnie Alameda says about Kat Sandercock, hunting the knowledge. Yep, hunting inches. Hunting on, the edge. Yep, just the same for Montana. An extra little bit of advantage that you can get. 2-2 Two -two pitch right back at her. And in between every inning, her and Lance McMahon and Allie Shipman are having about a 60-second and 90-second conversation over by the dugout, just working through what just happened, talking pitch calling, what's, what's coming up, how do we feel, what pitches are working. Well, even Lonnie said it, the new pitching coach, they're getting to know each other. And, and you know, the, he calls the pitches for Montana, so he's still learning her style and what she likes to throw in different counts and when she's ahead versus when she's behind and all the nuances that go into the game within the game. By the way, we'll be chatting with Coach Murphy next inning. Here's Edenfield. And she comes back with a little extra juice on a curveball in the outside corner. <laughs> it's Edenfield to swing through it. Eyes at the eyes, 0 and 2. Well, and this is where you do your homework and you know your opponent. Edenfield likes to climb that ladder. She likes to go after that high pitch. So it's making the adjustments ahead 0 and 2. You're going to take her back upstairs. a rhetorical question, I would. <laughs> I'm going to say yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. I'm down on the dirt. And you talk, so sometimes you just got to show it. Yeah. Try to lead them on a little fishing expedition. <laughs> Especially when you're in clear water. <laughs> <laughs> Back up to it. One 
two pitch. Two and two. She's been so much more efficient in the second, third, and fourth inning, too. That first inning, she threw 32 pitches, but since then, like, the pitch total just at 57 now. Got it back under control. Got her. One, two, three for Montana Fouts and her third strikeout. Montana Fouts working Edenfield up in the zone with the rise ball, but then picks up the strikeout with the drop. Puts that pitch at the knees, lets it roll off the table. Big strikeout for Montana Fouts. Welcome back to the 2023 Tax Act Clearwater Invitational presented by Evo Shield. Pitcher's duel so far as we move to the bottom of the fourth and head coach Pat Murphy. Coach, one time through the order against Sander Cock and now the top of the lineup's coming up. What's the message to your hitters right now? Well, we, we need to decide what we're going to hit because her drop ball has been really good and we kind of rolled over it. A uh, couple, if, if you're getting ground balls to third base and you're right-handed hitter, you're rolling over a drop ball. So you got to let it come in a little bit longer, try to smoke the middle. Dowling did that, but their shortstop made a great play and she was positioned perfectly. And Coach, Montana Fouts in that first inning through 32 pitches, she settled in after that. What are you seeing from her? Yeah, a lot better. I think I something with the, the mound as well. I think they fixed it for her, but uh, I thought she got a really, really good hitter out there with some quality pitches, and uh, I think she's just getting warmed up. She told us before the game she felt great, so um, that's a good sign for us. And I just want to say thanks to everybody that hosted the tournament. It's been a great time down here in Clearwater, a great event, great weather, and we appreciate everybody. Well, thank you, Murph. We yeah. appreciate you Thanks guys a lot. coming. Yep, see ya. Thanks, Coach. Good stuff on the righties against the drop. Uh, the uh, one, two, three, four, five of the ground outs were to that left side. As Kat Sandercock retired all nine she faced through the first three innings. And now back to the top of the order here in the fourth and Kenley Kahalen. Still looking for their first base runner. Kahalen launches one. Back goes Kerr, back to the wall, and a home run for the freshman Kenley Kahalen. That's a home run, Kenley Kahalen. One of the best ways to go up and try to hit a drop ball is to see the bottom of the ball, to make an adjustment, to not ground out anymore, but to get the bottom. And this is just more of a flat drop ball on the outside corner, just didn't have any down movement on it. And the freshman, Kahalen, who should be in high school right now, goes yard and is able to barrel up this pitch right back up the middle of the field to put Alabama on top and make an adjustment like Coach Murphy was talking about to smoke it up the middle. One nothing tied. On Sandra Cox, as soon as she threw that pitch, she knew it was elevated. It was mid thigh. It's a mistake she does not make very often. Ashley Prangy, they ground out the first one down. Well, that shook things up a bit after a scoreless three and a half innings. Cahallan takes it out, and here's Allie Shipman. I love that she was first pitch swinging, too. There's a lot of young players that like to look at one pitch, you know, just get that feel. If that first pitch is sweet, you got to go get it. Well, Murph has high praise for Kinley Cahallan. Yeah. Saying that she could be one of the best hitters to ever play at Alabama. Brought up the name Kelly Crutchman, yeah. and whenever you do that, mm. impressive. You've got the potential. Well, it's that left side power, you know, difference maker. Shipman gets into it, but much properly placed. Two down. Let's revisit that home run. Mm. Look how she steps open just a little bit, ball on the outer half and just goes down into it just drives that dead center
Second career home run. Here's the four hitter, Bailey Dowling. Bailey just one for nine so far in the tournament. But an all SEC performer last year. There's the home run totals here in Clearwater, 85 of them. Another elevated drop ball. This one even higher. It's up at the belt. Billy Dowling taking this out of the yard. Doesn't have to worry and try to get that bat and barrel under the ball. That ball is so far up in the zone. She just comes straight through, bashes that out of the yard. Her first home run of the year. How about the adjustments here for Alabama? Or perhaps Kat Smitty uh, just getting yeah. things a bit too elevated in the zone and Alabama pouncing. Well, and I mentioned earlier, typically when Kat misses, she misses low. Both of those misses have been up and in the zone. Emma Broadfoot. When you think about it too, both of those pitches were in similar locations. It's just one was against a lefty and one was against a righty, but it was a drop ball that just didn't get down enough on her arm side, stayed more flat, stayed more up in the zone. And look at Alabama just capitalizing on a mistake that, you know, two mistakes that the All-American has made in this inning. Got under it. Flaherty. Side retired. But two home run balls puts Bama on top. Big inning for Alabama. Second time through the order. The freshman, Callen, hits the first home run. And then Bailey Dowling hits the second. Those were long gone on two mistakes. Two nothing Alabama as we move to the fifth. A pair of solo home runs in the bottom of the fourth for the Tide has them on top. Our schedule update brought to you by Evo Shield. There's one other game going on tonight on ESPN2 at 8 Eastern, Mississippi State and UCF. State 2-1 and one in Clearwater, UCF 1-3 and three so far. And that's 8 Eastern on ESPN2. Bottom of the order, 7-8-9 to face Fouts. Montana got in trouble in the first inning. Florida State loaded the bases, and she worked out of the jam and has settled in nicely since. All three hitters at the bottom of the order for FSU grounded out in the second inning. an off-season of turmoil with all the comings and goings on the roster. It followed on the heels of their stunning loss in the regionals in Tuscaloosa. They had played in the Super Regionals every year, 16 straight years, and last year came up short, lost to Stanford after winning 44 consecutive regional games. And Kerr puts that one beyond the outfield fence. And from ground outs to home run balls. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that 
FSU needs to make the same adjustment that Alabama did against Sandercock in her drop ball to be able to look more at the bottom half of the ball. This actually is a rise ball that didn't get up enough. It also is more flat. Janai Kerr just takes this the opposite way. So many solo home runs, a third solo home run in this game. Janai Kerr out of the lineup with a little bit of pop. I'm happy to cut the lead in half. It was 2-1 rise ball that left a little bit too close. And both these pitchers really starting to feel what it's like when you leave your pitch, your hard pitch is too close to the zone. Lively balls, lively bats. I want to see from your team, too, is just to answer back right away. Alabama puts up that. Those two runs in the bottom of the fourth, and then right away, Florida State answers back. It's something that they're so good at doing year after year. Punch, punch back. Mauricio <laughs> <laughs> too low. Muffley, the four year starter, has been so. Consistent for them. Has overcome a lot of injuries to stay in the lineup. After her softball career, wants to be a firefighter. Has made friends with uh, the fire department down in Tallahassee. And in turn, they've become big fans of softball. Knocked down. And the flip over to first barehanded catch in time to get the out as Kahalen covered for Broadfoot. Well, Broadfoot is going to go get this ball. And you know how it is sometimes it just trickles away from you. It's like, come back, come back. And then the flip over. Kahalen, a good job of going out and catching it. Look at the way she's going to catch this. She's going to barehand it and show the umpire. That was close. <laughs> Again, freshman. Making this catch yep. and the stretch, and there's no there's no review here at the tournament, so they're not going to be able to go and take another look at this one. It it is what it is on the field. It's a good play. Yeah, I think that one would be tough to overturn anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good call. So much focus it takes to catch that ball mm -hmm. while you're running and still trying to get your foot on the bag and also worried about the runner running past you. Well, and, 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 and I like the way she caught it and showed the umpire. It wasn't like she was searching for the bag. You know, all those things that make it look like you didn't make the out. You have to make it. You have to sell it to the umpire. Pinch hitter here in the nine spot is Hallie Waykazer, who's been their best bat, actually, here in the tournament. She's four for nine. And has a hit in each of their four games. to swing around for the third time for Florida State. Nice mix there, goes up with the rise ball, comes back down with the drop. Fouts with that elite spin, that those RPMs on that drop ball versus the rise ball. Gets that nice spread. Eight to ten inches of being able to have that vertical spread between a rise and a drop. Upstairs for the strikeout, number four for Fouts, two down. Come well, on, I just I love this setup. So she goes rise ball up, she comes back with the drop low in the zone and comes back to the rise ball. This one's tighter. You can see the spin on it, getting those RPMs up over about four, 1,400. And when that ball is spinning that tight, you're gonna get that late sharp movement.
Kaylee Mudge grounded out in the first, singled in the third. And then got caught up in a double play. Interesting, just the difference in that rise ball that struck out Wade Chaser and that last rise ball. That last rise ball was 70 miles an hour and it, it really didn't have sharp bite. The one that she got the strikeout on was about 68 and it had a lot more bite to it. And so sometimes it's easy for power pitchers to throw through their spin. They're throwing it too hard, they run out of real estate and the ball is Never more breaks. Right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So sometimes you just take a little bit off it, you work on those the rotation and you let the ball do the work and get that better bite. One, two to Mudge. Well, and I think that we've seen her do that all throughout this game yeah. too. Some of her best drop balls have been at about 68 miles an hour. And you might think, well, what's the difference between 71 and 68? But it absolutely does make a difference. And Michelle too, I would add, I think it also helps her change up to not overthrow that pitch and to get a better feel. And I feel like she has to overthrow everything. Not that pitch there. So they throw that pitch more. Count goes full. Later tonight, the opening weekend of the XFL continues with the Seattle Sea Dragons and the DC Defenders. That's at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN and ESPN Plus. Hey everybody having a good time here in Clearwater. Mudge staying alive. for Florida State. Well, Kerr gets all into a rise ball that just does not get up, and she punishes it, drives it oppo to put the Seminoles on the board. Hey, let's take a look at tonight's performance update. Prepared by... And a couple of home run balls for Bennett. And they come out in, the leadoff hitter, the freshman, put the first run on the board with that solo shot, and then Bailey Dowling later in the inning. Another solo home run. We've had three in this game. All the runs that have been scored have been off of a home run. But Alabama hit the two, and Florida State just the one. So we go to the bottom of the fifth. Six, seven, and eight coming up in the order. Stick around next inning. In the top half of the sixth, we will reveal which 16 teams will be back here in Clearwater next year for the tournament. So you can start preparing. Yeah. Sandra Cock to face Jenna Johnson. Jenna, four hits in their two games yesterday with three RBI. She had a nice, nice little Saturday. Just week two of the season on the road to the Women's College World Series. <laughs> I'm sure all the parents after this weekend that have traveled here feel like we're like deep into May <laughs> yes. at this point. They're yes. getting gray hairs, they're stressful all weekend long. And it's just February. 
Yeah, it, almost it almost feels like a conference tournament or it does. regionals, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> well, you got to get ready to possibly play multiple games mm -hmm. in, in, in a day. You've got to be prepared to try and come back from a loss. You know, the postseason, you get into double elimination. I'm just feeling the nerves, you know, the oh, ah. intensity of each situation and knowing how to handle it, how to think it. And then you can put together this spectacular regular season and boom, mayhem occurs. Like last year, five upsets in the regionals, including Mississippi State beating Florida State as a two seed last year. There were two other upsets in the Supers. We had three unseeded teams in Oklahoma City, including Texas, who made it all the way to the championship series. The first time ever that an unseeded team was in the finals succumbing to Oklahoma. Just speaks to the parity, the growth of the sport. Knocked down by Sandercock. Quick reflexes in the circle. One down. I think that's an underestimated part of her game. We know that she's a good pitcher. We know she can throw a drop change and a rise ball, but she's a really good defender, too. Saw her make a play earlier in this game for herself on the ground, and this one is a line drive that she's just able to knock down right next to her and be able to make that throw. Keep the leadoff hitter off base. Always so important. And a lot of that is because of where her glove is at release. Her glove is in front of her body so she can protect herself. And it seems like a little thing, but it is huge. Oh, and that hit Hevlin. How about that? The first base runner of the game for Bama. And it's funny because it looks like it's a rise ball, but it's spinning almost like a drop ball. So this, it's interesting to me trying to figure out exactly what that pitch is. I agree. Amanda, I'm with was, you. Yeah. Thought the same thing. Well, and, and both the balls uh, that were hit out of the park, elevated drop balls. Yep. There is some activity now in the bullpen for Florida State. Allie Dubois is out there. We saw McKenna Reed out there earlier. Pruitt chops it back to the pitcher. Quick out of the circle to make the play. That'll bump the runner over into scoring position with two outs. Another excellent defensive play by Kat Sandercock. You know, she just comes out of her pitching motion aggressively. She has to go get that, otherwise Pruitt is safe 100%. Lonnie Alameda will come out with Kristen White, the number nine hitter coming up. She grounded to short the first time up. Perhaps just a chat with the defense here with that runner on second base now. How about today's impact players brought to you by Visit St. Pete Clearwater and the impact that these two pitchers have had. We're seeing them both throw maybe their best games the weekend, of course. Be, yeah. Sander Cock getting her first start of the weekend, and Tana's thrown a lot here. Saving their best for last. Yeah. And, and both, you know, thrown significant amount of innings over the last four days. It's a long weekend, when you're, yeah. especially when you're playing top 10, top 25 competition mm -hmm. every game here. Mm -hmm. And mentally staying in it as well, because you know you're going to get roughed yeah. up, right? So you got to have that short memory. You give up a long ball. You've got to flush it. Let it go. Well, it's so fun to watch Lonnie deal with her pitchers. You know, she, mm -hmm. that's her specialty. She talks about sprinkling in analytics and technology a little bit at a time for the pitchers to digest in their scouting reports and their daily conversations. White tried to drop it down, foul. I already told you my three M's. Coach Alameda's coaching up the pitchers. Metrics, mindset, and mechanics. Oh. So, metrics, you know, you, also data, but I like metrics. It goes with the flow a little bit better, but she's so good at teaching all three of those and communicating with her pitchers. And speaking the same language, you know, she talks a lot about that, making sure. sure they're all on the same page so that when she is relaying information to them, 
they know exactly what she wants. Knowledge equals confidence. I wonder White. Infield way in. High chopper to Muffley. And still beat her there. Side retired, five innings in the books. We got a one run ball game. Julie's team last season. It's a big list right there, 16 mm -hmm. teams. Good place to be, get ready to get your tickets. Into the sixth inning, Alabama with a 2-1 lead over Florida State, courtesy to a pair of solo home runs, Kelly Cahalan and Bailey Dowling. Florida State got one back in the fifth. Janai Kerr a solo home run. It's two, three, and four now to face Fouts. Six outs left to work with. and hit into a double play. Remember, staying back on that off-speed pitch. Remember last game, she hit a changeup that was elevated a long way over the fence. Oh. And the right field line was off of Louisiana. Solo home run and a three-run swap. Her first two-homer game in a Florida State jersey. Can't keep up with the Fouts rise ball, one down. Strikeout number five for Montana. That's a big strikeout with the way that she was seeing the ball coming into this game. They've kept her pretty quiet, a walk. And also hit into a double play, and then the strikeout on a rise ball, getting her to chase out of her zone. And I think that changeup helps set that up. See a little bit off speed, and then you put that rise up at the eyes, so easy to, to bite at that pitch. Keely Harding. One for two with a single. Remember, Kaylee had the walk-off double in extra innings in this Sunday night showcase a year ago to beat UCLA. Came up clutch. This is the inning that you really face the home run power for Florida State with Leonard, who she just struck out, but also Harding, and then Dak on deck. A lot of power in these three hitters' swings. Big inning where we're at in this game. Well, that's the other head scratcher, right? It's the home run hitters tonight aren't from the expected bats. <laughs> exactly. It's been some of the others. Talked about how these lineups, you know, a lot of them, there's nowhere to hide. It's power one through nine. When you make a mistake, it's going to get tattooed. Two and two to Harding. And Harding got a base hit off of a curveball. I like the way Montana has stayed away from the outside corners. Two strikes so far in this at bat have been rise balls up at her eyes. See if they go back upstairs. They do. Forces the pop up. Tricky with the win, but Hevelin hauls it in, two down. Well, tomorrow night, big showdown in women's hoops. Number three, Stanford, and number 16, UCLA, coming your way from Maples Pavilion. Our coverage begins at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Undefeated number one South Carolina did survive tonight. They beat Ole Miss in overtime. Number one Oklahoma in softball did not. They lost to Baylor today, so could see a likely move of UCLA mm -hmm. to number one in the country. Man, that was with Jordy Ball, their ace in the yeah. circle. And UCLA went 5-0 and here. Several big wins. Yeah, with big wins over Florida State and Alabama. Yep. Well, in Oklahoma and UCLA maybe can settle it next weekend in Palm Springs. That's there you go. That's true. There you go. So we'll find out on the field. Katie Dack struck out in the first, grounded to short in the fourth.
Slice the outside corner, one, two. And a third, one, two, three inning for Montana Fouts. Strikeout number six has Alabama three outs away. And boy, is she fired up after this strikeout. That rise ball is working late in the game. Look at the emotion from Fouts late in this game. higher tonight. Terrific matchup here in our Sunday night showcase. Alabama 2, Florida State 1. Cahalen and Dowling homers for Bama. Kerr a solo shot for Florida State. Crimson Tide are three outs away and they will swing it at least once more here in the bottom of the sixth against Kat Sandercock. Two All-American pitchers will try and finish their business. An important inning for Sandercock to keep the score the way it is. Back to the top of the order. And here is the home run hitter, Cahalen. Jumped on a drop ball that didn't drop. Well, she first pitched swinging again. Coming right out. And you know that's smart because most pitchers, what do we do? We want to get ahead early. Probably going to be one of the best pitches you're going to see. The first pitch, that is. Second pitch swinging, 0-2. Oh, Come on, you can see it's a drop ball that is elevated, and she just gets under it and bashes it out of the park. She takes it dead center. They continue to work her on that outside part of the plate. Continuing to challenge her on that low spot. Two from Cat, and again, this is a, a young lady who's supposed to still be in her spring season in high school, but chose to enroll early, joining the team in the second semester here in time to practice and suit up. Alabama has such a rich history for their leadoff hitter. So many All-Americans in that spot, usually left-handed, it seems like, too. Brittany Rogers, Caleb Burrow, Jen Finn. I'm sure we're missing a few. It's hard to name them all, because there's <laughs> one after another. She's more power and average, though, to me, than the yeah. typical triple threat. Slapper speed. Slapper bunt speed. Halen, high fly ball out to center and Kerr is there. One down. Well, that South Carolina basketball team we told you about surviving in overtime tonight against Ole Miss. They will play Tennessee uh, Thursday night. Women's college basketball on the road to Dallas in the final four this year. South Carolina, can they stay undefeated after a scare tonight? Led by National Player of the Year, Aaliyah Boston. Here's Prangy. Couple of ground outs. Prangy's been good. She's been consistent this year. She's had power, four home runs coming into tonight. She's, she's the bat when you think of the ball flying out of the yard that you really have to respect.
Big expectations for her to have a huge year in the SEC, according to Patrick Murphy. With her consistency and her power, feeling much more comfortable now in year two in the SEC. Alabama top to bottom has hit well this tournament. It's not easy to come here and hit over 300 as a team. Entering this game, both Florida State and Alabama had done that. So many quality pitchers here. Actually hit a two-run home run in their opener, a win against Duke. Then she hit two home runs in the loss to UCLA. Drove in a run against UCF. Two and two, good take. Off-speed drop, so easy to bite after that. Looking low. Back up the middle, and Muffley couldn't quite haul that one in, and a base runner for Bama with one out. Don't forget there's more softball coming up tonight on ESPN2 at 8 Eastern, Mississippi State and UCF. And perhaps you too can sprinkle like a unicorn. I always try. It's always <laughs> That's my goal. That's the goal. Isn't that the goal? Wake up. <laughs> unicorn in mind. Pinch runner here is Cat Grill. Prangy can re-enter. And that will be all for Cat Sandercock. Enter McKenna Reed. Lefty freshman from Portland, Oregon. And a big moment in her young career coming up. Tax Act Clearwater Invitational, presented by EvoShield, is brought to you by Tax Act. File for less and get more. St. Pete, Clearwater, Florida. Let's shine. Plan your escape at visit stpeteclearwater.com. And EvoShield the source for custom-fitting protective gear. Around the Tampa Bay area, and over here at Eddie Seymour Softball Complex in Clearwater. The pitching change with one out and one on in the sixth inning is McKenna Reed. And the biggest moment of her young career, 12 innings of work in her six appearances as a freshman. And she's gonna have a lot of velo up in that. High 60s to 70 miles an hour, lefty spin, and it's a rise ball, so she's gonna attack the zone high. She's a good mix coming from Cat, which is from the right side and down to McKenna Reed, the left side and up. And she'll deal with a couple of veterans here in Shipman and Dowling, the next two up. I like how they really kind of defined her role early in the season as a freshman, throwing her into a lot of relief appearances and no starts in the year for McKenna Reed, but she's been really competitive and Really fiery in relief, comes out and throws a lot of strikes. It was a completely different look. It's still early, but we may see fewer complete games this year as more coaching staffs talk about having bullpens, some even closers, as opposed to the traditional one-two punch that can throw every inning over a weekend. It's that second, you know, that third time through the line, but sometimes fourth time. Same metrics that you see in baseball. Yeah. The averages go up, the more number of pitches the hitters get to see. And coaches are carrying a lot more pitchers on their roster too. Staffs now being six, seven deep. Yeah. Some pitchers, their job, you know, get me three outs, get me an inning. Shipman puts that one out of play. Cat <laughs> Sandercock 
getting into the sixth inning. 63 pitches tonight. Three hits, two of them home runs. And a 2-1 Alabama lead. Kept everything else on the ground. Didn't have any strikeouts in the game. A lot of ground outs. As Ali Shipman tries to get the rally going, she has a hit in all seven Alabama games this year. Not one yet tonight, as Cat Grill will scoot over into scoring position. She's been a tough out, too, is get to strike out on an early season. Tough with two strikes. And Alabama done a good job of being tough with two strikes in this game. No strikeouts for Alabama. Don't forget, coming up later tonight, the Seattle Sea Dragons and the DC Defenders. Get your fix of XFL opening weekend. 8 Eastern on ESPN. Score that a pass ball. And Amanda, to your point too, coming into this game, the hitters for Alabama had struck out 26 times and walked only six times. So really good job here with controlling the zone this evening. That's Florida State pitching. Here's the 2-2. Got her. And got her to chase. Two down. Michelle, this is that rise ball that you were talking about that McKenna Reed will throw. What a pitch up and in on the hands and continue to head up the first strikeout on Ali Shipman's season is that pitch right there with a runner in scoring position, down by a run, a freshman just made a pitch to the three-hole hitter for the K. Here's Bailey Dowling, the home run, her last time up. Goes the opposite way, and right there is Kaylee Harding. Side retired, we head to the seventh inning, and the last chance coming up for the Seminoles. Can they get after? Montana Bouts, who has held them in check just the one run so far tonight with six strikeouts. How about a look at tonight's performance update prepared by Tax Act, and it's a lot of Montana Fouts. A lot of Montana Fouts, over 900 strikeouts in her career. Why? Because she can roll the ball up and down. She's got a great drop ball, rise ball combination. She's used them both effectively elevating when she needed to, and then going downstairs for a different look. A lot of times when we think Montana foul, you two think rise ball, curve ball, but the drop ball tonight has been very effective. A couple of walks, those were early in the first inning, and since that first inning, she's tightened up. Nice game so far for Montana. See if she can close it out. Five, six, seven, do up. Flaherty and Edenfield. First pitch swinging, one down. Always good as a pitcher to get a quick first out in the seventh inning. Boy, these Sunday night showdowns have been oh. intense oh. every year. Every year. Drama. And this is this is the one that's been building since yeah. the last inning. The matchup with Edenfield. Is she struggling or is she due? She is one for 12 here in the tournament. And has struck out twice tonight. about all the scores too that we've had in these games. And this is, I think, one of, if mm. not the lowest scoring games that we've we've had in the tournament. But the trend has continued with the long ball. <laughs> all the scoring's yeah. been off the, yeah. the solo home run. That's right. Two of them for Bama, one for Florida State. The Seminole that hit it out is Janai Kerr in the on-deck circle. Two and oh. Right down Main Street. Is this a 
feel like Enfield's seen the ball real well off of fouts. Close pitches, she's taking all the way. Pitches that are out of the zone, she's swinging at or check swinging. Seems like she's guessing a little bit. Yeah, that's a leverage count at 2-0. I, I would have been swinging out of my boots on that one. Just like that. And so she's backwards, exactly. So she watches the strike, that's a really good 2-0 pitch, and swings through a rise ball that's out of the zone. You can just tell the hitter's in her head a little bit. And go back to her routine and breathe through it. Just takes one pitch, you know, to make an adjustment. She's chased a lot in this game. 2-2 Two -two from Fouts. Take good eye. Fold. This time she struck out in this game, it's been off of a drop ball. Here comes the 100th pitch of the evening for Montana. Struck her out. Number seven, two down. It's a big deal to strike her out three times in one game. The next batter will be Sarah And the only batter that has touched her tonight steps in as the last chance for Florida State. A solo home run jumped on a rise ball back in the fifth. Janai Kerr. A 2-1 pitch in the fifth inning that Kerr just goes and gets on the outer half, just gets under it and elevates it opposite field out of the park. <laughs> oh, one. Glove by Hevlin from her knees, won't even try. And the tying run is aboard. Go ahead to the plate. And the number eight hitter, Josie Muffley. It's a hard hit to the left side. Kerr has proven that she can hit that outside pitch. And Hevlin has had a nice day at shortstop, recovered from a game that we saw earlier in this tournament where she didn't look as sharp and as confident fielding that shortstop position. But nothing that she could do. Speed of Kerr. And with two outs, Shania Kerr gives FSU a little bit of life. Amaya Ross will be the pinch runner, the tying run at first base. Josie Muffley is 0 for 2, is grounded out to first base twice. As Montana Fouts tries to close it out. Four hits tonight for FSU, and Janai Kerr has two of them. Both teams trying to avoid their third loss of the season early on, too. Both lost an opening weekend, both lost one game here. goes the throw down and ricochets off of her and she's going to take third. Wow, and this is aggressive. You're down to your last out. And Ross is going to take off. The throw down is just going to ricochet off of her. Opportunity to see it in front of her pops up immediately, gets over to third. Six 
50 feet away. Muffley grounds it to first, backhanded, broadfoot, ball game. Alabama wins it and strands the tying run at third. Team win for Alabama. The way that Montana fouls through, getting a couple of home runs, making adjustments, a second time through the order against Sandercock, and then defense being able to step up and make some plays late too. How important was this game? You could see the energy, the passion. Montana Fouts coming off the field, hugging her teammates, the celebration. This means a lot. It kind of caps an amazing tournament here in Clearwater. Oh, another great weekend. Well, 40 games in four days. And Alabama with the two solo home runs and a top-notch performance from Montana Fouts gets the win over Florida State. On behalf of our entire crew, Amanda Scarborough, Michelle Smith, I'm Beth Mowens. So great to be back with you on the road to the Women's College World Series. Coming up next, Sports Center.